Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today we're diving into the intricacies of AMD's latest Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 processor, embodied in three compelling new mini PC configurations. In fact, one of them was so compelling that I've replaced my venerable 32-core Threadripper with a mini PC. What? Find out which one at the end of the episode. We'll pit these three systems, the HP Z2 Mini G1A, the GMK Tech Evo X2, and the Framework Desktop against one another in a rigorous analysis, highlighting their shared strengths while uncovering the subtle differences that could sway your decision. Let's set the stage with the Ryzen AI Plus Max 395 chip itself, a chip that represents AMD's ambitious foray into AI accelerated computing on their Zen 5 architecture, which was codenamed Strix Halo. This APU integrates 16 CPU cores with 32 threads, capable of boosting up to 5.1 GHz from a 3.0 GHz base clock, all fabricated on TSMC's advanced 4 nanometer FinFET process. Its cache hierarchy is robust. 80 KB L1 per core, 1 MB L2 per core, totaling 16 MB of L2, and a massive shared 64 MB L3, culminating in 80 MB of total cache for rapid data access. The integrated Radeon 8060S graphics boasts 40 compute units based on RDNA 3.5 architecture, clocking up at to 2.9 GHz with support for up to 96 GB of shared memory from the system's LPDDR5X 8000 RAM, enabling desktop-like graphics. And it can achieve that performance without a discrete GPU. The XDNA2 NPU delivers up to 50 tops for dedicated AI tasks, contributing to a system-wide AI performance of up to 126 tops when synergizing with both the CPU and GPU, which supports AMD's claims of up to 125 tops in some optimized cases. Configurable TDP ranges from 45 watts to 120 watts with peaks of up to 140 watts in the high power modes and a maximum junction temperature of 100 Celsius. And with some of the systems, we see that temperature fairly quickly. For Windows users, it all translates seamlessly to integration with DirectML for your AI workloads, enhanced by AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2 for gaming. What makes this showdown intriguing is how these three systems, each equipped with 128GB of RAM, interpret the silicon differently. Note that the RAM in each of them is non-upgradable in most cases due to soldered design for better bandwidth and signal integrity. They're not identical twins or triplets, but rather siblings with distinct personalities. The HP emphasizes enterprise-grade reliability and security, the GMK Tech prioritizes value, connectivity, and balanced thermal management, and Framework champions thermal endurance and modularity. We'll explore their builds, cooling strategies, performance under load, connectivity options, unique features, and real-world implications, drawing comparisons to established benchmarks like our fabulous Dell 7875 Pro workstation. Pricing adds another layer. The GMK Tech starts around $1,800 for the high-end configs and framework at $1,999 for their 128GB variant, and the HP likely commands a significant price premium for its workstation credentials, though exact figures will depend on how you configure it. Starting with the HP Z2 G1A Mini, this machine stands out as the professional's choice, leveraging the Ryzen AI Max Plus Pro 395 variant, a business-oriented SKU that unlocks AMD's Pro technologies. But the Pro designation isn't mere marketing. It provides advanced hardware-enforced security like full-system memory encryption via AMD Memory Guard, secure nested paging for enhanced virtualization isolation, firmware TPM 2.0 integration, and proactive threat detection mechanisms to mitigate physical and software-based attacks, including side-channel vulnerabilities. Perfect if you're overseeing a fleet of development machines or secure workstations. Physically, the HP Z2 Mini G1A exudes premium build quality in its ultra-compact and it's constructed from thick aluminum alloy with MIL standard 810H certification for shock, vibration, and environmental resilience. Good to know, making it ideal for the very demanding Windows workloads you might experience. The toolless lid design facilitates quick access to the internals for maintenance and storage scalability is impressive. Dual M.2 PCIe 4.0 slots supporting up to 8 terabytes with RAID 0 or 1 configurations for redundancy or performance striping, achieving sequential reads over 7 gigabytes a second. The internal power supply eliminates external bricks, maintaining a clean desk setup, and connectivity is comprehensive with Thunderbolt 4 ports, multiple USB 3.2 Gen 2 at 10 gigabits, DisplayPort 1.4A for multi-monitor arrays up to 8K by 60 Hz, and even optional Wi-Fi 7 modules for some screaming fast Wi-Fi. The amount of memory that you allocate to the graphics side can reach up to 96 gigabytes, and it bolsters your AI-driven tasks like machine learning and Visual Studio ML.net, and things like that. However, the HP's cooling solution, a compact vapor chamber heatsink with dual fans, reveals the trade-offs they had to make under sustained loads. 
In our testing, it quickly reached the 100 Celsius TJ Maxx, triggering thermal throttling that caps power at around 100 watts after those initial bursts, prioritizing your acoustic comfort and component longevity over raw performance. This conservative thermal profile ensures reliability in 24 by 7 operation, but might frustrate power users chasing maximum multi-threaded performance and Windows applications like long Visual Studio compiles, Blender 3D renders, or parallel processing in MATLAB where sustained clocks are crucial. Shifting to the GMK Tech Evo X2, this contender appeals to the budget-conscious enthusiast seeking a balanced performer without the enterprise overhead. It employs the standard Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, foregoing the Pro features to keep costs down. Around $1499 for the 64GB and 1TB base model, scaling out to over $1800 for the 128-2TB configs with the 128GB option currently sold out. I take it that's a good sign, so check back soon. The Evo X2's design is visually striking and functional with a 76 by 73 by 3 inch aluminum chassis featuring aggressive venting, CNC sandblasted oxidized finish for durability, and subtle RGB accents that nod to its gaming roots while fitting seamlessly into a Windows development rig. Cooling is a notable step up from the HP. A dual blower system augmented by three turbofans, two of them dedicated to the CPU and focused airflow right on it, and one for memory and SSD cooling. And there are triple copper heat pipes enabling 360 degree heat dissipation and longer sustained operation at the 120 watts TDB and your peaks out to 140. Temperatures stabilize at 90 to 95 Celsius during prolonged tasks, reducing throttling and allowing better clock maintenance compared to the HP as evidenced in reviews where it outperforms in extended benchmarks. However, the external 230 watt power brick introduces a minor inconvenience for cable management in tight spaces, though it aids in keeping the internal temperatures lower. If you don't mind the external brick, the Evo X2's case is the smallest and the cooling is adequate, so it might be the sweet spot. Storage here is expansive again with dual M.2 2280 PCIe 4.0 slots ideal for hosting large Windows virtual machines or datasets. Connectivity also shines. Front ports include two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2, USB 4 Type-C, a 3.5mm audio combo jack, and an SD 4.0 card reader for quick media transfers. At the rear, you'll find DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.1, another USB 4, a 2.5 gigabit LAN via a Realtek 8125BG, Wi-Fi 7, and Bluetooth 5.4 for low latency peripherals. Performance claims include AI inference and LM Studio that's 2.2 times faster than an RTX 4090 at lower power, thanks to the efficiency in local LLMs like DeepSeek RL32B or Llama 4's 109B on the 128 gigabyte configuration. Finally, the framework desktop emerges as the Thermal Virtuoso, designed for those who demand unyielding performance in extended sessions. Like the GMK Tech, it uses the non-pro Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, but its modular ethos, rooted in framework's repairable philosophy, sets it apart with swappable ports, expansion cards, and a focus on upgradability that extends the system's lifespan in evolving Windows ecosystems. Most of the 4.5-liter chassis, handle and all, is cool and nice, but it has a notable aesthetic flaw, a clear plastic side panel that doesn't fit very well, imparting a somewhat budget feel despite the premium internals. This is a minor quibble for enthusiasts prioritizing function as the design allows easy component swaps. I wound up running the machine without the flimsy side panel, but I would have preferred a perforated steel case. The real star here though is the cooling. A massive 120 by 120 by 55 millimeter heatsink with six copper heat pipes, dense aluminum fins, and high-end Honeywell PTM 7958 thermal interface material for optimal heat transfer and minimal degradation over time. T setup sustains power draws over 100 watts and up to 120 watts TDP at just 80 Celsius, outpacing rivals by minimizing throttling and enabling consistent all-core boosts closer to 4.5 gigahertz in heavy loads. For Windows Power users, this translates to tangible gains in CPU-bound tasks, such as compiling a large source base, running parallel simulations, or exporting 4K timelines in DaVinci Resolve without performance dips. The internal power supply keeps things self-contained and storage aligns with dual M.2 PCIe 4.0 slots supporting up to 4 terabytes, expandable via modules, while connectivity includes customizable ports up front like USB 4, HDMI, and Ethernet. Price starting at $19.99 for the 128GB config, it positions itself as a future-proof investment. Other recent reviews have been praising its ability to handle desktop class workloads like 3D modeling or AI training in PyTorch, where thermal headroom allows overclocking via Ryzen Master for up to perhaps 10% extra performance. Now let's dissect the benchmarks in greater depth, where the differences manifest the most vividly. 
We tested each system at stock settings under Windows 11 Pro with identical 128GB RAM configurations to isolate variables. Cinebench R23 Multicore evaluates raw rendering power when it has to be sustained for 10 minutes, whereas Geekbench 6 breaks down single and multi-threaded CPU and GPU performance into bursts. To showcase the ability of these chips to handle models with tens of billions of parameters, we'll be testing with Gemma 3's 27 billion parameter model under Olama. They don't put all three to the ultimate multi-core test by running the GitHub Primes benchmark on them. In Cinebench R23 multi-core, the HP scored 36,012, edging out the Frameworks 33,935 and GMK Tech's 32,541 in short bursts, reflecting the Pro Variant's optimized firmware for quick power ramps and efficient cache utilization. The framework superior cooling pulled ahead in Geekbench Multicore with 22.313 compared to GMK Tech's 16.770 and HP's 17.096. The 30% delta is likely attributable to reduced thermal limits and better sustained clocks as confirmed in the Pharonix Linux cross tests adapted for Windows. Single core Geekbench favored the framework at 29.57 with the GMK Tech close at 29.41 and the HP at 28.37, highlighting minor variances in boost algorithms and thermal overhead. Now the framework definitely has better cooling, so this particular result surprised me. GPU benchmarks in Geekbench show the GMK Tech leading at 94,736, likely due to its triple fan configuration for optimizing iGPU thermals for RDNA 3.5's ray tracing and upscaling features, versus framework's 87,540 and the HP's 87,318. AI token generation hovered around 10 per second across the board, respectable for inference on Windows, achieving up to 12 times faster LLM performance than Intel's Lunar Lake in least in AMD's claims, but it paled against the Dell 7875 workstation's rate of 50 per second, which granted benefits from its dual RTX 6000 GPUs, but it's a point of comparison. Prime Civic echoed multi-core trends with the framework at 18,653, the GMK Tech at 18,150, and the HP at 19,681 in shorter runs, but the framework was able to take the lead in our hour-long test by avoiding throttling. So as always, it depends to a certain extent on your workload. For comparison, the Apple Max M4 Mini is faster on the CPU side, but with a GPU score of 69,153 comes in well behind the Ryzen's. For faster inference, the integrated GPU of an M2 Mac Ultra can perform about 20 tokens per second, about double what the Ryzen's can manage. These results illuminate trade-offs for Windows users. The HP's throttling may hinder it a bit in marathon compiles or AI training sessions, but its pro features excel in secure, managed environments. Think the main join setups with group policy enforcing updates or compliance-heavy workflows under GDPR where memory encryption prevents data leaks. GMK Tech's balanced cooling and extensive ports suit versatile use like running multiple Hyper-V VMs while gaming or handling 8K video walls for presentations. Framework's thermal headroom is a boon for overclocking via Ryzen Master or sustained loads in Adobe Creative Suite where it can deliver 12-15% more frames in video exports, though its build quirks might irk perfectionists seeking professional aesthetics. Power efficiency adds some nuance here. Noise profiles vary. Frameworks larger fans hum steadily without spikes and it seemed the quietest overall. The HP is pretty much silent at rest, but the fans spike up quite a bit under real load. Upgradability favors framework for port modules and future expansions, while HP's RAID and MIL standard durability add durability and critical Windows installations. The GMK Tech's Wi-Fi 7 and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet provide forward-looking networking for bandwidth-intensive tasks like remote desktop or cloud syncing. In choosing, consider your priorities. If security, manageability, and workstation-grade builds define your Windows ecosystem, then the HP Z2 Mini G1A is unmatched, despite its thermal conservatism and its price. For a cost-effective, well-rounded performer with exceptional connectivity and AI value, the GMK Tech Evo X2 delivers without excess. If unrelenting performance in demanding prolonged Windows workloads is paramount, then the framework desktop's cooling supremacy and modularity make it the victor. What's my bottom line? Well, if price doesn't matter, get the HP. And if it does, I'd probably get the GMK Tech. But if you've always wanted a tiny PC that looks just like a shrunken tower PC with a big handle on top, or you favor a homebrew vibe, then the framework is your answer. The reality is that they're all close enough to each other in specs and perf that you're really deciding among how the various manufacturers decided to interpret their respective compact AI PC visions. Check out the free sample of my book on Amazon, the non-visible part of the autism spectrum. It's intended for folks that don't have an ASD diagnosis, but who suspect they might be somewhere on the spectrum. It's everything I know now about living a successful life on the spectrum that I wish I'd known long ago. 
and pick up a classic Dave's Garage mug or hat in the new merchandise store linked in the video description, and then use both while watching an episode of Shop Talk on Dave's Attic, where we answer and discuss the best user questions from the comments section that week. Check it out every Friday. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.